I tried to upgrade my PC. I was so excited, you guys. I, I had a bunch of great upgrades, and it was all supposed to go smoothly, but, uh, well, let's just say things did not go smoothly. Uh-oh. Is it even gonna boot? Hang on a sec. Yeah, yeah, this is this is running like garbage. Crap. Something's wrong. Oh, that's, that's not good. I did get to the bottom of my problems, and I'll tell you what went wrong, and I hope that we can fix it and get my PC up and working again in this video. But first... Are you tired of seeing that annoying activate Windows message quietly judging you and your life choices from the corner of your screen? Why don't you freaking do something about it and order a genuine Windows 10 key from SCD Key? Just go over to the Windows 10 Pro page on SCD Key and add it to your cart. And then, get this. Get this, you guys. You could use my special super secret promo code DWEEB to save 25 freaking percent. And then you could use the key to activate your copy of Windows. And then you're, you're, you're done. You're, you're good to go. Oh, and once you're activated, you could upgrade to Windows 11 for free if you're into that sort of thing. Can you freaking believe it? No. No, you can't. Hello there, I'm TechMeep, welcome, <laughs> thanks for clicking on the video. I was so excited for this upgrade, so excited, and uh, it led to so much disappointment. I was going to switch out my Ryzen 7 5800X with a Ryzen 9 5950X, switch out my RTX 3080 with an RTX 4070 Ti, get a nice power supply upgrade with a 1000 watt Seasonic power supply, and install a 280mm MSI AIO liquid cooler. Two of those upgrades did not work out as I intended. And it's, it's been a, a, a huge pain in the buds to get my PC into a workable state. And I've been living with it for about a week and it, it's just it's freaking <laughs> terrible. But I have a solution, I think. I have some more hardware that I'm going to swap out and add and I hope that this will solve all my issues. So with any luck, we'll have a fully working PC by the end of this video. But before we get to that, let's go to past TechTweeb. TechTweeb from what a week ago, that bright eyed youngster who was so excited to get his new hardware installed. He had no idea what he was in for. <laughs> Here he is, so excited to be making a video and installing some new hardware. My PC at the time had a Ryzen 7 5800X in the MSI X57 Gaming Edge motherboard. 48 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM clocked at 3600 MHz, an MSI Ventus 3080, an MSI Mag A750 power supply, and the cooler that's on there is the Thermalright Assassin X 120R cooler. That cooler freaking rocks. My 280mm MSI Core Liquid cooler died. And this Assassin X worked really well as a temporary cooler. It handled the 5800X way better than I expected. And it was only like 15 bucks. But I'm going to be replacing that with the RMA of the MSI 280R Core Liquid AIO cooler. Which should do a pretty good job. Uh, my two main upgrades are my CPU and GPU. For the CPU, I'll be swapping out my Ryzen 7 5800X with the Ryzen 9 5950X. And the other big upgrade is this RTX 4070 Ti. I got this at a pretty good price on a flash sale and it was only a tiny bit more expensive than a comparable Radeon GPU. I wanted an RX 40 series GPU to do some testing with Nvidia's new DLSS 3 and, and, and deep learning frame generation. I, I wanted to make a video on that topic and I needed a 40 series GPU, obviously. So get subscribed so you don't miss that. And my power supply is getting an upgrade too. <laughs> Everyone loves Seasonic PSUs. So I finally bit the bullet and upgraded that as well. And I forgot to show it at this part of the video, but I also got a RAM upgrade. I'm going up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. The build went great uh, at first. I, I started by removing the GPU and <laughs> well, look at this. I, I thought this was funny. My RTX 3080 isn't a, a small GPU by any means, but look how much bigger this 4070 Ti is. It's kind of hard to see, but uh, trust me, they feel worlds apart in terms of size. So I removed the power supply. I undoing my meticulous cable management is uh, always depressing. Next, I set up the AIO liquid cooler. 
putting the, the fans on it. My plan was to have them both on the inside of the case, blowing out through the radiator to exhaust out the front of the case. That uh, turned out to, to be a mistake, as you'll see in a minute. I was so excited to get this 5950X into my system. I I've wanted this CPU for ages. It it's going to be a big upgrade. Not necessarily in terms of gaming. It will be an upgrade there, but mainly in terms of productivity, video editing and stuff, as I tend to do. And in installing the CPU block, of course, gave it a good cleaning while we're here before we put in the new power supply. Uh, speaking of which, here's the power supply. It's a Seasonic Focus GX 1000 watt 80 plus gold rated power supply with, a, with fanless mode for a nice stealthy PC. And my RAM, I had two kits before, a 16 gigabyte kit and a 32 gigabyte kit of Trident Z clocked at 3600 megahertz. That's not quite enough for large video projects. I, Adobe Premiere gets weird when it, it maxes out your system RAM. So now I'm swapping out the 60 gigabyte kit for another 32 gigabyte kit. So 64 gigabytes total. That should be much better for, for me and my, my big boy RAM needs. And before we get to the GPU, let's tidy everything up. We'll do all our cable management <laughs> since, since we're basically done, right? <laughs> there we go. Uh, I'll need a tidy. So the only thing left to do is to put in the GPU and uh oh, is this going to be a problem? Oh my God. Damn it. This doesn't fit. Um, crap. That radiator is totally in the way. Well, the, the fan on the radiator is in the way. So th this was my brilliant idea. I, I switched one of the fans on the radiator. I put it on the other side to pull air th through the radiator. Eh, whatever. <laughs> it works like this. And the GPU did fit. It, it's very tight, but it did fit. That, that was actually a big relief. And with a little bit more cable management and a good bit of blood, sweat, and tears, I was done. Time to fire it up. Is it even gonna boot? <laughs> yeah, it, it took a while. I, I guess to, to retrain the memory and adjust for the new CPU, but eventually it did spring to life. I was taken right into Windows, which was unexpected. I thought it would be taken to the BIOS with the new CPU, but eh, whatever. It, it seemed like everything was working fine, and I was excited to start up a run of Cinebench to see how uh, amazing my new CPU would do. Hang on a sec. Uh, wh why is this running so poorly? It wasn't going well, you guys. Not at all. <laughs> the CPU was throttling like crazy. Like, way worse than my 5800X. Yeah, yeah, yeah this is this is running like garbage. Uh, crap. Something's wrong. Oh, that's, that's not good. Maybe there was something up in the BIOS? Some weird configuration or something? Maybe if I just reset the BIOS to the default, it, it would work as expected. Oh my god, it crashed. <laughs> So now it's like a week later and here's what happened. When the CPU would get under any kind of load, it would throttle like crazy. Pretty much all the cores would drop down to like 0.5 gigahertz. I did some troubleshooting with some help from someone in my Discord server, this sand sculpture person. Oh, what a freaky hero. They stayed up with me until after 3 a.m. getting this sorted. Yeah, they knew right away what the problem was. It was my motherboard. This MSI X570 Gaming Edge. Apparently, it's just like a total meme at this point because it sucks so bad. <laughs> I didn't know that when I bought it. This video by Hardware Unboxed explains the issue. Uh, you see that? Warning, one board sucks. Yeah, that's my board. The, the MSI X570 Gaming Edge. This time we have the Infineon IR35201 controller. MSI takes four signals for the V-Core portion of the VRM and doubles them using IR3598 phase doublers. MSI is using discrete on semiconductor MOSFETs and on the high side we have eight 4C02N MOSFETs and on the low side, 84C024N MOSFETs. Uh, wh whatever that means. From, from what I understand, it, it's just a terribly designed VRM. It is it's just not nearly sufficient for my new CPU. It was probably just barely enough for my 5800X. De definitely not sufficient for my 5950X, hence the throttling. So what Sand Sculpture helped me do is fine tune my PBO limits. We found a good set of PPT, TDC, and EDC values that it was stable at. And I'm basically running at a 95 watt eco mode with this setup. It 
did work like this though. It, it actually was a, a big upgrade for my 5800X. <laughs> with that chip, I would get a score of around 15,000 on Cinebench R23. And with the 5950X in the 95 watt eco mode, I, I'm getting around 22,000. This chip should be getting around 27 or 28,000. So I, I'm definitely missing out on some performance. But at least since I'm running at a 95 watt eco mode, that should be that the thermals at least would be under control right? <laughs> Wrong. So I had this cooler on it. This is the RMA replacement of the MSI Mag Core Liquid 280R. The old one died because of a sediment issue. It started out okay, but then, then over time it slowly got worse and worse. So I sent it away for an RMA to be replaced. And guess what? Guess what you guys? This new one? It's the exact same freaking thing. It started okay. It was fine for like a couple days, but over the last week, it's gotten worse and worse. It's now common for me to be at like 78 degrees Celsius when I'm idling at the desktop. And it shoots up to above 85 as soon as it gets any sort of load, reaching over 90 degrees. Thermal throttling, and it's freaking loud. Listen to this thing. I have to record my voiceovers on a different PC and put my main PC to sleep while I'm recording because it's just too loud. It's like a vacuum cleaner sucking noise. Yeah, it's sucking all right. Sucking my will to live right out of me. With all that said, I am loving the RTX 4070 Ti. I'm loving the extra performance that I'm getting with the 5950X, but I I'm shooting myself in the foot if I stick with this motherboard. And honestly, th this cooler has to go to. I'm, I'm freaking done with this thing. I hate it. Both of these are MSI products. Maybe MSI has some good products. I I'm sure they do, but they're officially on my naughty list until, until they can make this up to me. So, uh, I got a new motherboard. Board. This is one of the good cheap motherboards that were in that hardware unbox video. It's the Asus Tough Gaming X570 Plus. And I'm gonna switch coolers too. I'm going with this, the Thermalrite Peerless Assassin 120mm Tower Cooler in white with ARGB. I had such a great experience with my previous temporary cooler, the Assassin X, but I don't think that one will be enough to handle the 5950X. I'm willing to give this brand a chance to see what it can do with this Peerless Assassin. If it can actually handle this CPU, <laughs> it'll be a freaking steal. This cooler was like 30 bucks. Switching motherboards is like the most annoying PC tech upgrade in the, the freaking world. <laughs> Actually, I think it would have taken me less time to tear the whole thing apart and build it from scratch because it, it's such a pain removing the old motherboard. Yeah, you know, with the, the cooler and the fans and the cables in the way and then installing the new motherboard and attempting to not have to redo the work of the cable management and the fans and then realizing it doesn't fit and you have to redo that stuff anyways. The motherboard is eh, not bad looking. I, I kind of like the vibe they got going from this generation of the tough PC components. It would look pretty good if you had a, an entirely tough build, <laughs> you know, with the GPU matching s stuff. At least it comes with some stickers. Everyone likes stickers. I actually installed the cooler before putting the motherboard in the case. Again, this is the Thermalrite Peerless Assassin. I might make a video about this cooler because, spoiler alert, it's freaking awesome. Six heat pipes rated for 265 watts, two 120mm ARGB fans, in white of course, and it was 30 bucks. It's a freaking huge cooler. <laughs> I thought it would be easier to install the cooler first, but I had a heck of a time getting it all into the case like this. I had to remove the screws, holding in the fans, and remove all the cables, and even then it was super tight to plug in the CPU power cables and the fan cables and all that stuff. I, I don't know if it would have been possible to install the cooler after the motherboard was installed. That probably would have been a, a lot easier to, to work with. I also installed the 140mm RGB fans from the MSI liquid cooler into the front of the case. I didn't have any extra fan screws, so rather than order some and wait, I used the PC Builder Techweeb's secret weapon, zip ties. And this worked great, actually. Held those fans on nice and tight. Uh, here's the GPU, and again, it's a, a super tight fit. This isn't even one of the biggest 40 series GPUs, and it's just barely able to squeeze into this case. And the moment of truth, wow. There it is. We posted. <laughs> That's actually a, a huge relief. <laughs> I really didn't want to have to take all this stuff apart again if something didn't work. But hey, it works and I'm happy. So I'm going to run at the default settings just to get Windows booted. And we booted up just fine. Nice. Okay, well, we're all installed and ready to go. Let's do a Cinebench. 
So before uh, the MSI X570 Gaming Edge motherboard, this 5950X would totally poop the bed. <laughs> it would immediately drop most of the clocks down to like 500 megahertz and take forever to finish the run. Even after I dialed in the PBO settings to that 95 watt eco mode, I could only get around 22,000, uh, I think. So uh, let's do a run. We're gonna watch those core clocks and we'll see how we do. Oh yeah, look at that. We're keeping a sustained 4.2 gigahertz on the clocks, which is exactly what I wanted to see. No, no huge drop like we were getting on the MSI board. Temperatures got pretty warm, 83 degrees Celsius, but I actually realized after filming this that one of my cooler fans wasn't spinning. The, the RGB was working, but the fan wasn't spinning. But regardless, I got a score of 27,600 points. That's a huge relief. Finally, finally I have my 5950X running like it should. And now after I've fixed the fan thing and dialed in the PBO settings and applied a slight undervolt, I just did a quick test run as I was getting ready to film this video and I got a score of 28,300 with a maximum CPU temperature of 81 degrees Celsius. And generally it runs way cooler than that. Right now, as I write this script, it's hovering at around 60 degrees Celsius. <laughs> Compare that to the nearly 80 degrees Celsius idle temperatures I was getting before with that stupid MSI Core Liquid 280R. It probably goes without saying, but don't, don't buy this cooler. It really is a piece of garbage, <laughs> if a, a $30 tower cooler can beat it. Uh, speaking of which, <laughs> how cool is this cooler? I, I can't believe how good it's doing. I, you know, I want to make a video just about this cooler, but honestly, I, I'm at a bit of a loss about what I could say about it. You know, I, I don't have a, a dozen other coolers to test, to compare it to, to do, do like a proper video, but I, I'm so impressed with it that I, I feel like it deserves a video. And this MSI X570 Gaming Edge motherboard, <laughs> here's the thing. It, it did totally fine with my 5800X, to be honest. It worked. It didn't throttle itself into oblivion the way this 5950X did in that board. So, I mean, if you have a, a lower TDP chip, you know, something around 100 watts or lower, it's probably going to be fine for you. But don't choose it over a different brand's better board if it's the same price. I think they actually stopped making these boards. I haven't seen it new in a long time. Yeah, th this was a huge disappointment to get my new chip, shove it in my motherboard, and then have that be the reason that the, the chip barely works. Well, all's well that ends well, as they say. My mom says that all the time. It's such an old timey saying. And I'm happy. I'm happy that I have my PC up and running. It's cool. It's quiet. It's powerful. Oh man. <laughs> when I finally got it running properly and I fired up Adobe Premiere and I, I, I couldn't believe how well it ran. <laughs> Maybe I could put some footage on the screen or something. I was scrubbing around the timeline with like effects and speed ups and, and stuff. My old setup could never perform like this. And I've edited a few videos since then and it, it, it's just, uh, it's, it's a dream to work on. And gaming. Oh my God. The gaming, you guys. I'll save that for another video though. I'm, I'm going to make a few videos featuring this 4070 Ti and oh baby it's silky smooth silky as a kitten's whiskers I'll tell you that much so get subscribed so you don't miss that but this video has gone on long enough thanks for joining me on this amateurish attempt to make my PC more good uh click the thumbs up button if you had fun or the thumbs down button if you didn't for some reason stop by my discord server if you do that sort of thing we got a good bunch of tech weebs over there to hang out with oh that's it for me i'm tech thanks for watching Bye bye